What does racism look like to you? I'm going one way, he's coming the other. And he stops, you The racism wasn't just all black, white. We're traveling the country to have real conversations about how race impacts who we are and how we heal from racism with racial healing practitioners like Monica Haslip, the founder of Little Black Pearl and Art Design Academy. I'm here in my hometown of Birmingham, Alabama. It's a place that's filled with history and I am excited to have conversations with people about race and all the things that are typically uh, associated with Birmingham. All the kids from Roosevelt were bust to Shays Valley to see where we are now and where we're gonna go. Well, you're gonna make me cry. You were born and raised here in Birmingham. Yep. You're still here. Still here. You and I are really close in age. Uh -huh. I'm interested to hear what your personal experience was like. And when, when did you first realize that race mattered? Growing up every day on a daily basis, the racism wasn't just all uh, black, white. It was also from a nationality standpoint. Mm. So we had a lot of uh, Italians in town that ran the local corner stores. Mm -hmm. So they felt a lot of it too because they could not open up their stores in so communities either. But the black community was welcoming to them. How has Birmingham over that time changed? I was born towards the end of the Civil Rights Movement. And I got a chance to experience a lot of the not so good side of our history from my siblings from elementary school. We stayed two blocks from the uh, elementary school, Great Mount Elementary at the time, that my three older siblings could not attend. They had to walk about two and a half, three miles to the city that, or rather to the school that allowed them to, to go for education. The government, of course, which everyone knew, the city government at one point was all negative, but uh, now it's totally different. Mm -hmm. The city now is predominantly black in terms of government as well. Uh, the narrative now has definitely changed and it has become more inclusive of all races, all communities. Tell me a little bit about your uh, experience growing up. I'm an army brat. Okay. Short and simple. Yeah. So born in Germany. So yeah. I spent a few of my formative years, not just infancy, yeah. but age nine to 12 in West Germany, back when they called it West Germany. Yeah. And it gave me, I think, a worldview that mm -hmm. a lot of my classmates didn't have. I want to just start out talking a little bit about uh, your incredible 41-year career in journalism and, you know, how and where you started and what that felt like as a black woman to, to actually have that kind of career for that long. It was, you know, easy is the way I would characterize it, but fulfilling. Yeah. and frustrating in equal measure. Okay. The first job was in Waco, Texas, where they told me to my face, you know, we're cool with you as a reporter out there in the field with the fires and you know whatever else pops off, but we're not ready yet for a black woman as a sit down in the studio anchor. You recently retired. How over the last maybe five years or so have you seen the narratives shift in the industry? to maybe eight years okay because you know change of leadership and attitudes about the media mm -hmm. i can time stamp that okay where suddenly we're the enemy mm -hmm. you know, there's a lot of hate projected on us that i don't really think existed before mm. and so when you're out on a live shot at a crime scene or a mudslide and a truckload of folks roll past roll down the windows and linger to shout not just you know you out of your name but you know you're fake you're this you're that, you're that you know, eats away at your soul a little bit. Like, I'm doing honest work. Why are you bothering me on my job? I yeah. don't go to your job and trash talk you, but I felt the sea change. When that shift happened, what, what did you experience? I recall being at the end of a high-speed chase because those are big in LA and we're, there's a good-sized crowd because it's been broadcast for the duration of the pursuit. So we're encircled by strangers in a residential neighborhood. 
There are the cops with the interviews and the witnesses who may talk to us. And this kid stopped on his skateboard, could have been 12, 13, stopped in the crosswalk as I'm going one way, he's coming the other, and he stops, you n what do you think you're doing here? And I'm like, who taught this kid to say these things to a grown person? Because yeah. I would never use that language. And yet he was feeling, you know, some kind of way. Yeah. And he wasn't even showing off for his friends because they were not even in earshot. It, he was as close to me as I am to you. Wow. And there was nobody else around. And this child stopped me in my tracks and, you know, tried to break my spirit. I assume that's what he meant to do, yeah. to disrupt my yeah. flow, yeah. my train of thought, my sense of self-esteem. I'm on my job. Yeah. I didn't cause this to happen. Like, where, is your, where are your parents? Do you think that it's possible to end racism? Possible, yes. Probable, no. I think asking me this question today, I gave a different answer. If you had asked me that four years ago, five hmm. years ago, I would have given you a different answer. Really? Yeah. So what would the answer have been four or five years ago? That it was more probable. Had the rhetoric that we currently have in this country not been so prevalent mm -hmm. these last four, five, six years, whatever mm -hmm. the case may be, I think we were definitely on a faster trajectory to end racism. Yeah. Now I think it's reared its head again because it's now been made popular to talk about negatively. Mm -hmm. Where before the narrative, when you talked about it, it was definitely more positive. Mm -hmm. People were more willing and listening. Now I think you're listening now to see the real differences as opposed to see where we are, what we have in common. Yeah. Do you believe that it's possible to end racism? Oh, I hope so. Do I believe? Do you believe it's possible to no. end racism? No, I don't. But I hope so. I hope I'm proven wrong. Hmm. I've seen so many iterations of racism. Yeah. No. Hmm. I would, boy, you're going to make me cry. Hmm. I would love to say, yes, absolutely, full stop. Yeah. But I can't. You know, I can't. But for my granddaughter's sake, because she's only six, maybe in her lifetime. But at this rate, probably not in mine. I turn 63 tomorrow. I don't think I'm going to see that before I go meet my maker. But I hope I'm wrong. Amen to that. Amen to that. Thank you for the questions. Absolutely. Yeah. Are you sure you're not a journalist? <laughs> so you went deep. No, okay. <laughs> I'm a racial healing practitioner, okay. so I kind of feel like a journalist sometimes. Sure. Well, <laughs> I applaud the questions, oh, for thank real. You. you made me think about things I haven't thought about lately. Yeah. And feel them, Yeah. because you tuck them away. Yeah. yeah. Could I give it to you? Oh, absolutely. <sighs> My conversation with Monica was more revealing than I expected it to be. In other words, she pulled things out of me I didn't expect to share with anybody. And I kind of had buried it deep inside because, you know, that's how we cope. I think it's a conversation, a dialogue that is needed. I think the, the efforts to talk about it will lead to a better solution than where we've been for sure and where we need to go. I feel like my armor has been, I don't know, undergirded. I'm a little more confident now. I mean, I always walk in the world like I belong there because my mother and father told me that I did. I didn't know how much I needed this piece of therapy, and I'm grateful. It was so interesting today to be in my hometown talking to people from all around the country who shared their stories and talked about racial healing. And I was so moved by the possibilities and so excited to know that there's a vision for the future. Changing the narrative starts with sharing stories. Share your story with us.
Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.